I'm just thinking about that that wonderful Cezanne uh, quote, which I did not know, and the word it to represent its sensations. So I I think that um, you know he was speaking in French, so I'm not sure if, if, exactly um, you know how he might have said it or thought of it. But the way it comes through in this translation is not his own sensations in looking at those things, but the actual sensation of the tablecloth or the peaches or, you know, whatever it was that he was painting. Yeah, the apples. I would say it was probably both. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. You know, let's look up the French. That's, but that is really quite wonderful. And, of course, it is exactly what we're trying to do, is to find a way to talk about our feelings. Um, through sensation. And it's a little tricky in English because we use the word feelings for two very different things. You know, one is for emotion and the other is for what we actually feel um, with our, with our uh, senses um, and bodily sensations and uh, what, we, uh, what we experience in our bodies. And um, the emotions, we can't really talk about directly without falling into abstractions or cliches very, very easily. And so we need the other kind of feelings, our senses, in order to convey our, our thoughts and our emotions. Absolutely. So, for example, you could say, you know, sort of attempting to impart the sensation of the feeling of loneliness you might say anything but you might say you know lonely feels like a like a cold hard floor or um it looks like gray curtains in the wind or, or you know somehow that captures something of the feeling that is not you know that is pretty much unavailable to abstract Conceptualization. Exactly. Um, so that were the French is that would be ces sensations, which it's interesting because you distinguish there between sensation and feeling, and absolutely, um, um, sensation in, in, in French in, is sensations. That is the, the yes. sensate experience. Yes, and that's and, what we mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's. But it's interesting, I, I'm reminded now, and I don't have it in front of me, and I can't remember the exact words, but Matisse, who was essentially a devotee of Cézanne, mm-hmm. um, Matisse said something very similar, but he used the, he said something similar but different. He said, you know, people ask me why I, I paint an apple blue. He said, because I see it that way, it is the expression of the emotion that the apple produces in me. Mm. Yeah, he's speaking about emotion and not yeah. sensation. And these, but both of these, you know, can take place through this intimate connection with the living world. And that's what we're looking for in some way is, is how to... Um, how to talk about what we experience, but instead of talking about it through the language of psychology or uh, saying directly what we feel, which is always reductionistic. You know, if we say, um, you know, I, I love, I love my child, um, we go, mm-hmm. you know, that doesn't produce in in you a feeling. Uh, when you hear that, you just have information a- and in art, in poetry, we want to actually deliver an experience to the reader or the viewer. And so we can't do it just by saying it. Gertrude Stein wrote that um, we live in a period of late language and that there once was a time where people could say something like, or a poet could say something like, oh moon, I am lonely. And it would it make the, the listener feel an intense feeling of loneliness, but the language has been used too much. And now it can't do that so that we have to keep searching for ways to make the language new. And the way that we do it is through 
the sensei through the senses.